Forward of Selected Poems of Yone Noguchi. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Nemo. Selected Poems of Yone Noguchi by Yone Noguchi. Forward. I often wonder at the difference between the words of English poets and the daily speech of common people, and I think that it is not necessary to go to Milton or Dryden for the proof. The poetical words used by Tennyson, Browning, Francis Thompson, and even Yeats are certainly different from those spoken in the London streets or an English village shadowed by a church spire or darkened by dense foliage. But, on the other hand, how similar are the words of Japanese poets and those of the common people? Is it that the Japanese poets, whether they be Uta poets or Haku writers, are condescending to the common people? Or is it that the common people of Japan are entering into the realm of poesy? Or is it that our Japanese phraseology belongs to either of them, or does not belong to either of them, through its virtue of being neutral nature? Suppose a pensive young lady is standing by a veranda opened to the garden with blooming cherry trees, and her eyes are following the snow-white petals of cherry blossoms hastening to the ground. And suppose she murmurs, with a sigh. Why do the flowers fall in such a flurry? Now compare such an exclamation with the following Uta poem by Kino Tomonori. Tis the spring day with lovely faraway light. Why must the flowers fall with hearts unquiet? It is plain to see how the words of Japanese poets and common people join hands. This particular point is most worthy of notice in the discussion of the differences and similarities between the East and West in literature. It is said in the West that the poets are a race apart. The fact that our Japanese poets are not a race apart should be the very focus for a discussion of Japanese poets. While in the West, the poets claim special regard and, indeed, immortality for themselves. We in Japan treat the poet as a natural phenomena, as natural as a flower or bird. I admit that we Japanese as poets are lacking in creative power and do not aim, like many Western poets, at becoming rebuilders of life. We are taught not to deal with poetry as a mere art, but to look upon it as the most necessary principle along which our real life shall be developed. When we kneel before poetry, it is our desire to create a clarified pure realm where we can, through the inspiration of rhythm, arrange our own minds. And then we recognize the existence of the compromising ground of passion where we as members of society find our safety. What great, uncompromising creators of passion were Shelley, Byron, Browning, and Swinburne. They were so earnest in their desire for the recreation of life, and not afraid were they, when their desire reached its climax, even to risk reaching a condition of confused intricacy. They were indeed great and wonderful heroes. We cannot help thinking, on the other hand, what cowards the majority of Japanese poets have been. I respect that attitude of Western poets in wishing to rebuild or recreate their own lives, and also I can well understand why they ascribe importance to their intellectual power. A great literary danger lies in this, of course, because there is nothing more sad and terrible for poets than to enslave themselves to intellect. But we have also our own literary danger. 
I mean that we often mistake a simple and cold morality for an art. I should like to know what is a more dangerous thing for poets than this sad morality. There are only a few Japanese poets who have failed from their abuse of moods and passions, but we know so many cases wherein their poetical failure was quite complete under the stifling breath of conventional morality. This damage would not necessarily be below that inflicted by intellect. It might be greater. We notice that the Western poets often attempt to discover a poetical theory even in the waving plates of Apollo's robe and analyze intellectually a little cloud flying in the sky. Admitting that their poetical theory and intellectual power are doubtless great, I have no hesitation in declaring that it is they who harden, shrink, and wither their own art. It is true to say that they owe much to the matter of form for the great development of their epics and dramas. Also, it is true that the undeveloped form of Japanese poetry has given a mighty freedom for our poets to fly into an invisible spiritual domain. We can say again that, if these poets, both of the West and the East, often stray into the field of non-poetry, it is the result of their too close attachment to forms. Of course, we want more passion and intellect in our Japanese poets, and also properly tempered patience and effort. And at the same time, we should hope that the Western poets would forget their passion and intellect to advantage and enter into the real poetical life born out of awakening from madness. I have no quarrel with a critic when he applies the word mad to his Western poets, but we Japanese would be pleased to see and admire the rare moment when madness grows strangely calm and returns to its normal condition, and there we will find our own real poetry. Not the moving dynamic aspect of all the phenomena, but their settled still aspect inspired the Japanese poets, at least the Japanese poets of olden days, to real poetry. But I know that the times are changing when we must, I think, cultivate the really living dynamic life. And I am afraid, with many others, that such a new literary step may bring us into an unhappy compromise with Western literature. Of course, there are poets and writers, both of the East and West, who know only how to compromise. But, on the other hand, we have a natural-born Easterner, for instance, Wordsworth, in the West, and there may be a natural-born Westerner in the East, who will bring the East and West together into true understanding, not through faint-hearted compromise, but by the real strength of independence which alone knows the meaning of harmony. Today, we must readjust the meanings of all things or give a new interpretation to all the old meanings, and we must solve the problem of life and the world from our real obedience to laws and knowledge that will make the inevitable turn to a living song and learn the true meaning of time from the evanescence of psychic life. Then our human lives will become true and living. We must realize the ephemeral aspect of moments when time moves and also the still aspect of infinity when it settles down. Seek the meaning of moments out of the bosom of infinity and again that of infinity from the changing heart of moments. That is the secret of real poetry. The moments that suggest the still aspect of infinity are accidental, therefore living. Again, the infinity that is nothing but another revelation of moments is absolute, therefore quite and full of strength and truth. The real poetry should be accidental and also absolute. See the river and trees, see the smiling garden flowers, see the breaking clouds of the sky. 
See also the lonely moon walking a precipitate pathless way through the clouds. The natural phenomena are, under any circumstances, revealing both meanings of the accidentalism which is born from the absolute. When our great poets of Japan write only of a shiver of a tree or a flower, of a single isolated aspect of nature, that means they are singing of infinity from its accidental revelation. The poetical attitude of Wordsworth was anarchical when, singing of the small celandine, daisy, and daffodils, he gave even a little natural phenomenon a great sense of dignity by making it a center of the universe, and broke the stupid sense of proportion by looking on things without discrimination. He was pantheistic, like nearly all Japanese poets and painters, because he was never troubled by any intellectual differentiation, and his clear and guileless eyes went straight into the simplicity that joined the universe and himself into one. His poetical sensibility was very true and plain, and he gained a real sense of the depth of space, the amplitude of time, and the circle of the universal law, and made his life's exigency a new turn of rhythm. I am glad to think of Wordsworth as the first Easterner of English literature. I do not know what one critic means when he calls Robert Bridges the father of the new poetry, unless he means that Bridges has regained the artless bent of the poetical mind, which was lost under the physical vulgarization of the mid-Victorian age, and that he has opened his honest eyes upon nature and life. He, like our Japanese Uta or Haku poets, gazes on life's essential aspects. If the Japanese poets teach the Western poets anything, it is how to return to the most important feature of poetry, after clearing away all the debris of literature. Their expression is simple, therefore mysterious in many respects. As it is mysterious, it is vivid and fresh. There is nothing more wonderful than the phrase, seeing poetry exactly. Nobody who has never lived in poetry fully claims to see its exact existence. And you cannot be taught how to live in it by reason or argument. You must have a sense of adoration that comes only from poetical concentration. The time is coming when, as with international politics, where the understanding of the East with the West is already an unmistakable fact, the poetries of these two different worlds will approach of one another and exchange their cordial greetings. If I am not mistaken, the writers of free verse of the West will be ambassadors to us. My acknowledgments are due to the editor of the Outlook, New York, for permission to reprint this essay, which has appeared in his pages. End of Forward What About My Songs by Yone Noguchi Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo What About My Songs the known, unknown bottomed, gossamer waves of the field are colored by the traveling shadows of the lonely, orphaned meadowlark. At shadeless noon, sunful eyed, the crazy one inch butterfly, dethroned angel, roams about her embodied shadow on the secret chattering haytops and the saber light. The universe, too, has somewhere its shadow. But what about my songs? And there being no shadow, no echoing to the end, my broken-throated flute will never again be made whole. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
Where is the Poet? By Yoni Noguchi, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. The inky garmented, truth dead cloud, woven by dumb ghost alone in the darkness of phantasmal mountain mouth, kidnapped the maiden moon, silence faced, love mannered, mirroring her golden breast in silvery rivulets. The wind, her lover, gray-haired in one moment, crazes around the universe, hunting her dewy love-letters strewn secretly upon the oat-carpets of the open field. O oh, drama! Never performed, never gossiped, never rhymed. Behold, to the blind beast, ever tearless, iron-hearted, the heaven has no mouth to interpret these tidings. Ah, where is the man who lives out of himself? The poet inspired often to chronicle these things. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Desert of No More by Yone Noguchi Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Desert of No More Until nothing muffles over the universe of no more, my soul lives with a god, darkness and silence. Ah, great nothing! Ah, the all-powerful desert of no more, where myriads of beings sleep in their eternal death, where the god dies, my soul dies, darkness dies, silence dies, where nothing lives but the nothing that lives to the end. Listen to the cough of nature. After the cough, the universe is silent again, my soul kissing the ever nameless idle faces of the universe, as in a holy heathen temple. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Seas of Loneliness by Yoni Noguchi, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. Underneath the void-colored shade of the trees, myself passed as a drowsy cloud into somewhere. I see my soul floating upon the face of the deep, nay, the faceless face of the deepless deep. Ah, the seas of loneliness, the mute-waving silence waters, ever shoreless, bottomless, heavenless, colorless have no shadow of my passing soul. Alas, I, without wisdom, without foolishness, without goodness, without badness, am like God, a negative God at least. Is that a quail? One voice out of the back hill jumped into the ocean of loneliness. Alas, what sound resounds, what color returns? the bottom, the heaven too reappears. There is no place of muteness. Yea, my paradise is lost in this moment. I want not pleasure, sadness, love, hatred, success, unsuccess, beauty, ugliness. Only the mighty nothing in no more. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Garden of Truth by Yone Noguchi Read for LibriVox.org by Nima The Garden of Truth Untimely frost wreathe over the garden, The staid bottom where e'er the sea. Alas! From her honeyed rim, frosts steal down like love messengers from the Lady Moon. A light-walled corridor in Truth's palace, a humanity-guarded chapel of God, where brave divinities kneel, small as mice, against the shoreless heavens. The midnight garden where my naked soul roams alone under the guidance of silence. 
the god-beloved man welcomes respects as an honored guest his own soul and body in his solitude lo the roses under the night dress themselves in silence and expect no mortal applaud content with that of their voiceless god end a poem this recording is in the public domain like a paper lantern by yoni noguchi read for LibriVox.org by eva davis oh my friend thou wilt not come back to me this night i am lonely in this lonely cabin alas in the friendless universe and the snail at my door hides steelishly his horns oh for my sake put forth thy honorable horns to the eastward to the westward alas where is truthfulness goodness light the world unveils me my body itself this night unveils my soul alas my soul is like a paper lantern its pastes wetted off under the rainy night in the rainy world end of poem this recording is in the public domain I Hail Myself as I Do Homer by Yone Noguchi Read for LibriVox.org by Nima I Hail Myself as I Do Homer The heart of God, the unpretending heaven, Concealing the midnight stars and glassing the day of earth, Showers his brooding love upon the green-crowned goddess, May earth in heart-lulling mirth. O poet, Begin thy flight by singing of the hidden soul in vaporous harmony. Startle the lazy noon, drowsing in the full-flowing tide of the sunbeams, nailing thy chants in eternity. The melody breathing peace in the name of spring calms tear to smile, envy to rest. Ah, thou, world of this day, sigh not of the poets who have deserted thee i i hail myself as i do homer behold a baby flower hymns the creation of the universe in the breeze charming my soul as the lover moon o oh, yone a ripple of the vanity water a raindrop from the vanity cloud lay thy body under the sun enameled shade of the trees as a heathen idol in an untrodden path awakening in spirit sent by the unseen genius of the sphere the earth a single roomed hermitage for mortals shows not unto me a door to death on the joy carpeted floor i i call the once dead light of day from the dark breasted slumber of night i repose in the harmonious difference of the divine sister and brother voice and silence and time O oh, Yone, return to nature in the woodland, thy home where wisdom and laughter entwine their arms. Ah, cities, scorning the order of the world, ye plunder rest from night, paint day with snowy vice. Alas, the smoke dragon obscures the light of God, the sky measuring steeple speaks of discontent unto the heaven. O oh, Yone, wander not cityward there thou art sentenced to veil thy tears with smiles behold the cloud hides the sins of the cities regiments of redwood giants guard the holy gates of the woodland against the shames chant of nature o yone sing thy destiny hymn of darkness for the ivory-browed dawn behold the deathless deity blesses thee in silence from the thousand temples of the stars above and a poem this recording is in the public domain the night reverie in the forest by yone noguchi read for LibriVox.org by nima the night reverie in the forest 
by my tears that i sucked from the breast of truth tears sister spirits of heaven smile sobs the wind thou pale wind tear vendor of the hideous night no one welcomes thee with thy unsold tears thou gypsy wind my fellow wanderer who fears light cease thy plaintive strain of the sweet home ever lost o oh, poet soul midnight comforter share my tears in thy heart ever tenanted by autumn kiss me wind to whom the gates of spring never swing open let us sleep under the weeping candle star o oh, repose whose bosom harbors the heavenly dream ships welcome me an exiled soul thou forest where peace and liberty divide their wealth with even a homeless convict let me sleep in thy arm boughs safer far than a king's iron castle guarded by mortal power lull thy guest to reverie master spirit of the forest with thy solemn love tales of ancient gods here ease and grandeur lodge in the forest heart where time ever reveals his changeless youth five miles i travelled the black-robed bird monk had ended his last prayer a good-night hymn ten miles i lost the home window light that bid sorrow and tears depart like masterless dogs twenty miles the eloping mother moon had abandoned her child my lonely soul thou darkness bewailing thy desertion by light i deplore my like fate echoing thy saddest strain friend night my tears overflow from the love fountain unto the sorrow made dells i an idle singer fleeing from the world's shame make a pilgrimage to an unknown land o oh, heaven or hell thou silence who never responds to mortal's voice where is the secret door of paradise speak once unto me o star thou radiant spirit of the blessed beatrice who once guided a mortal unto heaven brighten now my darksome path i alone pilgrim knock at the gate of heaven nay the silent castle of repose o oh, repose rhyme on lady rivulet from thy mountain memon thy tunable song awakening mortals vanity dreams ah nakedness nakedness to whom shame and pride are buried in the peaceful tomb of faith ah loneliness loneliness to whom a boatman of god is the sole saviour on the vast sea of eternity i repose under the forest arm bough if i awaken not forever pray brother mortal make my grave under the greenest grass and carve this line here sleeps a nameless poet and a poem this recording is in the public domain Song of Day in Yosemite Valley by Yone Noguchi Read for LibriVox.org by Nima Song of Day in Yosemite Valley O oh, thunderous opening of the unseen gate of solemn heaven's eternal court! Behold, clouds, tenants of this sky, sweep down from the heavens unto a secret palace under the earth i mighty yosemite a glorious troop of the unsuffering souls of gods marches on with battle sound against the unknown castle of hell i a divine message of heaven unto earth the darksome house of mortals to awake hark the heart-broken cry of a great soul nay the tempestuous song of heaven's organ throbbing wild peace through the sky and land 
the shout of hell wedded to the silence of heaven completes the valley concert forms the true symphony the female light kissing the breast of the male shadow chants the sacred union i a muse from the orient where is revealed the light of dawn hearken to the welcome strains of genii from the heart of the great sierras i repose under the forest boughs that invoke the deity's hymn from the nothing air here brother mortal lies the path like beauty's arm guiding thee into the heaven afar alone i stray by the mountain walls that support the enameled mirror sky enfolding my free-born soul in the vice purifying odors of the forest from an unknown corner of paradise art thirsty here rolls the snow-robed water for thy fulfillment does dullness veil thee here a stone chamber invites thee into the world of dreams through an unseen door o oh, return brother mortal from samsara unto the great valley yea the mighty temple of the world everlasting with the heaven and earth welcomes thee behold yosemite sermoning truth and liberty battles in spirit with the pacific ocean afar o oh, unfading wonder eternal glory i pray a redemption from the majesty that chains me lo hell offers a great edifice unto heaven o oh, i bid my envy and praise rest against thee i am content in the sounding silence and the powerless time that holds the valley in the age of gold i proffer my stainful body and leprous soul with the blackest shame unto thee i am united with the universe and the universe with me o oh, hail brother mortal the true joy is revealed unto thee be thou a wave ebbing and flowing with the air of heaven behold the genii of the forest chant peace unto the lord from an unknown shrine in the valley temple o oh, mighty chapel of god thou knowest not an iron chariot stained with hostile blood i idle spears and foolish shields dare not ruin thee proclaiming war in eternity end a poem this recording is in the public domain song of night in yosemite valley by Yoni Noguchi, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. Hark, the prophecy inciting wind quake of the unfathomable concave of darkest hell. Oh, the god scorning demons shout against the truth locked gate of mighty heaven. Heaven and hell joining their palace and dungeon, remold the sinful universe to an ethereal paradise. Oh, the sphere is shaken by the master mechanic working from the surface of the world to its center. Alas, the sun has fled in saddest woe. Oh, mortal, breathe thy silent prayer unto mighty Yosemite for mirth. Behold, the light of day leaves the white mansion to the care of dolorous night. The genie of the valley fly from the roar of a thousand lions to the sacred peace above. Lo, an unknown jeweler decks the black, velvety heaven with treasure stars. Yea, the mother goddess, mantling the earth with the night, forbids Yosemite disturb her baby angel's dream in the heaven. Hark, the night is conquered of the eternal falling of water sounding discontent throughout the earth. Oh, a chariot is rushing down to an unknown hollow in wild triumph. Behold, a dragon reveals divinity in the ghostly odorous sky of night. Nay, 
the mighty sword of the judgment day blazes down the heaven to the gate of hell end of poem this recording is in the public domain apparition by yone naguchi read for librivox.org by nemo apparition twas morn i felt the whiteness of her brow over my face i raised my eyes and saw the breezes passing on dewy feet twas noon her slightly trembling lips of passion i saw i felt but where she smiled were only yellow flakes of sunlight twas eve the velvet shadows of her hair enforded me i eagerly stretched my hand to grasp her but touched the darkness of eve twas night i heard her eloquent violet eyes whispering love but from the heaven gazed down the stars in gathering tears and a poem this recording is in the public domain ocho san by yoni noguchi read for LibriVox.org by eva davis dream was in the soul of the garden brook spring in its song ocho san leaned her down to face her image in the brook both smiled in greeting in sudden thought she looked behind the sadness of a midnight star abode in her unmoving eyes the mists of silence filled the gate of her lips the moments slipped by the sunlight fell over her face as a golden message the kiss of beauty graced her hair the soft odor of womanhood beautifully rose the butterfly surrounding her forgot to part she was in indolence slowly she began a dreamy smile silently facing toward a calm sea of fancy her smile was that of an april night cherry blossom to the wind softly she looked round and whispered at the return of my lord i will thus smile my sweet lover when anita shall return and smiling bravely with a sweet intent she said look what a beautiful smiling o cho san then much she blushed and started up and with a sigh began a languid graceful walk along the path her walk was that of an afternoon breeze with the fragrance of cherry blossoms the petals of the flower like butterflies abruptly fell some on her shoulders and her hair the brook gossiped of spring she walked amid the solemn loveliness of eve and solitude and dreams were with her soul dim poems rose around her like odors unto the moon she was beautiful as one who smiling enters in the gate of sorrow the earth upturned her melancholy face toward the heavens the evening bell tolled as the last song of a sea beloved beloved she cried her streaming eyes beheld a silent star end of poem this recording is in the public domain address to a soyo kaze by yoni noguchi read for librivox.org by eva davis footnote soyo kaze is zephyr in japanese End footnote. O oh, Soyokaze, from the golden bower of the morning sun, in gracefully loose gown, your eyes strewing the wealth of aerial beauty that is half shadow, half odor. Up with me, Soyokaze, I've left behind the mortal love and all the books dear next to woman. Up, up, and seek with me a thousand stars lost beyond the skies. Sail afar with me, O oh, Soyo Kaze, on light gleaming step. Sail into the garden strange, yet my own. I'll build there my home in the moonbeams. I'll gather the poems from the flowers. 
and from the hearts of birds. Sail, sail, my Sayokaze. When I am tired, we'll rest my head on your shoulder, and I'll listen to your tales that you heard under the roses passing through the woodland. When the tree throws its shadow on the ground, the shadow is its written song, and I see not its real meaning. You will instantly rise and play the harp of the leaves and make me fully understand. Oh, beloved Soyokaze, my dear comrade, be with my soul eternally, since I am sundered from the world and am alone. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Under the Moon by Yoni Noguchi, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. The autumn night had a sad, impressive beauty. I turned my face as a flower in indolence. The sweet mystery of indolence whispered me an alien legend. I, with lips apart, with the large mindless eyes, stood as one fresh from a fairy dream. The ecstasy of the dream was not yet dry upon my face. The strangest stillness, as exquisite as if all the winds were dead, surrounded me. I idly thought, what a poem, and what love were hidden behind the moon, and how great to be beyond mortal breath, far from the human domain. My moon fancy, aimless as a breeze of summer eve, Drowsy as a rose of spring morning has passed. My fancy was a fragrance as from an unknown isle where beauty smiled her favorite smile. How glad I was being wounded by the beautiful rush of yellow rays. The sad sobbing charm of the moon was that of the face of an ancient fairy. The moon gracefully kept her perfect silence until a greater muse shall restore the world from demon sword and unworthy death. I was in the lullaby of the moon, as a tree snugly wrapped in the mist, I lost all my earthly thoughts. The moon was voiceless as a nun with eyes shining in beauteous grief. The mystic silence of the moon gradually revived in me the immortality. The sorrow that gently stirred was melancholy sweet. Sorrow is higher far than joy. The sweetest sorrow is supreme amid all the passions. I had no sorrow of a mortal heart. My sorrow was one given before the human sorrows were given me. Mortal speech died from me. My speech was one spoken before God bestowed on me human speech. There is nothing like the moon night when I parted from the voice of the city. Drink deep of infinity with peace from another, a stranger sphere. There is nothing like the moon night, when the rich noble stars and maiden roses interchange their long looks of love. There is nothing like the moon night, when I raise my face from the land of loss unto the golden air, and calmly learn how perfect it is to grow still as a star. There is nothing like the moon night when I walk upon the freshest dews and amid the warmest breezes with all the thoughts of God and all the bliss of man as Adam not yet driven from Eden and to whom Eve was not yet born. What a bird dreams in the moonlight is my dream. What a rose sings is my song. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ohana-san by Yone Noguchi Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Ohana-san It was many and many a year ago In a garden of the cherry blossom Of a far-off isle you may know By the fairy name of Nippon That a maiden who was dressing her hair Against the mirror of a shining spring Casting over me her sudden heavenly glance, entreated me to break a beautiful branch of the cherry tree. I cannot forget. 
I was a boy on the way home from my school. I threw aside all my books and slate, and I climbed up the tree and looked down over her little anxious butterfly face. Oh, how the wind blew fanning me with a love that was more than earthly love. In a garden of the cherry blossom of a far-off isle you may know, by the fairy name of Nippon. I broke her branch, slowly dropped it to her upraised hands that God shaped with best art and pain. She smiled toward me an angel smile. She, speaking no word, ran away as a breeze, leaving behind the silver evening moon and hid for me in the shadow of a pine tree, in a garden of the cherry blossom, of a far-off isle you may know, by the fairy name of Nippon. I stole toward her on tiptoe, as a silent moonbeam to a sleeping flower, and frightened her with a shout of Mitsukitawa, and I ran away from her, smiling and blushing in a garden of the cherry blossom of a far-off isle you may know by the fairy name of nippon and i hid me beneath the gate of a temple that was a pathway to the heavens she stepped softly as the night found me and looked upon me with a smile like a star tapped my head with a branch speaking fondly my sweetest one I had no answer but a glad laugh that was taught by the happy wind in a garden of the cherry blossom of a far-off isle you may know by the fairy name of Nippon. And that maiden who was known by the pretty name of Ohana-san ran away gracefully as a spring cloud into the heavens, blushing and smiling. Then I followed Ohana's steps into the heavens, into the realm of love. And a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Miyoto by Yone Noguchi. Read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis and Nemo. The Miyoto The woman whispered in the voice that roses have lost. My love. The man said, Yes, dear, in the voice that seas cannot utter. The woman whispered in the voice of velvet-footed moonbeams. My love. The man said, Yes, dear, in the voice that mountains keep in bosom. The woman whispered in the voice of Eve, calling the stars to appear. My love. The man said, Yes, dear, in the voice of dawn for spring and life. The woman whispered in the voice of a young summer rivulet. My love. The man said, Yes, dear, in the voice of forest unto the sky. And a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Goddess, God, by Yoni Noguchi, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. The goddess spins the wool of the rivulet to its length. O oh, silver song of the female spinner! O oh, golden silence of the male spinner! God spinning with the wheel of time, white of day and darkness of the night, to eternity. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. By the Sea by Yone Noguchi. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. By the Sea. The moon came sadly out of a hill. I, from the city, silently stole. Many an hour had passed since I shook the sorrow thoughts to the winds. The moon's beautiful cold steps were my steps. 
in silvery peace apart from paths of men the dewy mysterious beams as love whispers stole in my hair which zephyr stirred as cloud i was as in the mazy sweet i knew not why i smiled unto the moon the moon understood me the silence was profound on the sea face unearthly dreams and greenly melancholic autumn voicelessly stepped the moon threw a large soft smile over the sea the sea was verily proud to sing the sea's passion wooing the shore taught me the secret how to win women but the love of woman was left far behind i slowly thought how beautiful to sink into the moon sea and to rise with worshipping face unto the moon a seabird suddenly sprung from the wave scattering sea pearls with lavish wing i sat me down on the shore with tragic eyes upon the stars with my ears unto the sea the silence of the stars was as great as the voice of the sea it is so since the first day that the stars keep the silence and the sea the voice i walked with the moon by the sea till the dawn what i thought was that the moon thought i knew not what end of poem this recording is in the public domain Ome Kotoba by Yone Noguchi Read for LibriVox.org by Nima Ome Kotoba One I hear, O lovely lady, in thy voice, the music of a hidden flower valley, a near yet distant. From thy face the beauty of spring flashes. I linger around thee, faithful and ecstatic. The murmur of a rose or of a white star that peeps out of another world of poetry is the murmur of thy gracious eyes thine eyes are veiled by the misty breezes thy lips of infinity are beautifully wet with human kisses and with the breath of life on thy cheeks bloom the flowers of moonbeams thy bosom holds the mystery of the sky the laughter of the air is thy laughter the freshness of a sea at morn is like unto thy fragrant thought of woman a wood with leaves glistening with dewdrops and a singing bird are symbols of thy fancy a flower of morning prayer is thy upturned look into the sunlight that like organ melody rolls up the vault of heaven from the east on thy hair flutters the gossip of heaven a vision of heavenly beauty in a haze is thy lithe form reclining upon the grasses a lily appearing from the gossamer is thy face looking out from the bewilderment thy soul is a divine complexity in which i lose my way as in a dream thy smile was born in light of summer blessedness the dark browed wind and spring rain is thy melancholy thy breath is the whisper along a violet road thy shadow on my breast is thy heart's history two i read o lovely lady in thy face all the religions of beauty they are nothing else but love thy silence musical and commanding is that of a harp set in the windless air whenever i see thee my new page of life begins with a moon of another light with a fresh stir of a new field of wealth if i was not born for anything else i was born with one aim to adore thee one aim is enough for any life thy head is thrust up into the breath of gods yet thy feet on the dandelion ground each pool of the sky woos thy beauty every shadow of earth tree gossips of thee the fancy road of thy song i pursue i loiter in the blessed vale of thy heart oh how proud i feel to see thy face 
hasting to meet my face as a flower hurries to the silken shower of sunshine i dare to say that thou art fed with my praising words lavished over thee i dream in the odour of thy womanhood since thou belongst me my life begins to be very important i have to walk safely on the clear road of emerald light safely along the flower-rimmed path of poesy with thy hand upon thy bosom i will feel all the mystery of thy love with my hand upon my brow i ask thee what a confidence thou feelst in me casting two shadows on the stream of life we will whistle of the sweet world to the moon three thy divinely large eyes o oh lovely lady gaze beyond our world into a hid kingdom of coral-hued beauty and sapphire thought the fragrance from thy lips which are a rose speaks more than thy golden speech the gossamers tarry around thy rose lips thou seemst unto me a vaporous beauty which i saw upon the spring seas laying me down on the silvery sand of the shore with my soul in the song of the seas i fear that thou mayest vanish any moment what a fear and joy i feel in my sacred marriage with thee the moon marred by clouds is beautiful joy mingled with fear has a deeper thrill how often before my lips opened wishing thy impressive kisses how often before my hand stretched wishing to feel thy deep bosom i ever dreamed of thee amid the breezes under the shadows of flowers and stars if my present union with thee be a dream the dream has to be eternal everything has a silent hour at whiles tis sweet to bathe in the silence by thy side tis sweeter to raise the head from the sea silence and to stare on thy high-born face like a sea ear gather on the sea waves with eyes turned toward the abandoned shore then in the stillness of eve yet stirring enough to make one sweetly sad i bind my body with thine own and send my soul along the road of the divine unseen four the soul of flower o oh lovely lady is the soul of poem the soul of poem is thy soul thou art like a faithful eyed caravan across the waste bringing heavenly jewels the winds come from east and west but thy wind of heart only comes from the singing woodland of love the air around thy bosom grows roseate by the fire within from the ground under thy feet has blossomed a daffodil thy presence is the presence of sun my old memory and new dream jauntily come riding on the eye flash of pearl thou art the soul of all the dawns in thy soul i see a brook whose song of silvery happiness i love most since i tired of iron buskin song thy soul with a faraway voice like that of an eve of a thousand stars calls me to a task of high yearning i see my face in the mirror of thy heart and triumphantly smile thinking that i am thy husband and slave under the tree shade i lay me down and smell thy balsam breath stealing around me like a sweet ancient tale upturning my face i draw thy lovely shape in the purple sky since i love thee my life grows plain my dream being only to be faithful to thee my toil being only to entertain thee the life of simplicity is the life of beauty with the beauty and with thee i remain forever end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Upon the Heights by Yone Noguchi 
Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Upon the Heights And victor of life and silence, I stood upon the heights, triumphant. With upturned eyes I stood, And smiled unto the sun, And sang a beautifully sad farewell Unto the dying day. And my thoughts in the eve Gathered their serpentine mysteries around me, My thoughts like alien breezes, The eve like a fragrant legend. My feeling was that I stood as one serenely poised for flight, as a muse of golden melody and lofty grace. Yea, I stood as one scorning the swords and wanton menace of the cities. The sun had heavily sunk into the seas beyond, and left me a tempting sweet in twilight. The eve with trailing shadows westward swept on, and the lengthened shadows of trees disappeared. How silently the songs of silence steal into my soul. And still I stood among the crickets, in the beauteous profundity sung by stars. And I saw me softly melted into the eve. The moon slowly rose. My shadow on the ground dreamily began a dreamy roam. And I upward smiled, silent welcome. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Poet by Yone Noguchi. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. The Poet. Out of the deep and the dark, a sparkling mystery a shape, something perfect, comes like the stir of the day. One whose breath is an odor, whose eyes show the road to stars, the breeze in his face, the glory of heaven on his back. He steps like a vision hung in air, diffusing the passion of eternity. His abode is the sunlight of morn, the music of Eve, his speech. In his sight, one shall turn from the dust of the grave and move upward to the woodland. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Face in the Mirror by Yoni Noguchi Read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis and Nemo. The Face in the Mirror Why do you cry so, dear little girl? Come, dry your tears, I said, like a dew-bathed butterfly in the sun-rays, and then tell me of yourself. The girl said, My kind Donasan, t'was this morn, when the breath of spring blew along the mountain path, that I went up alone to gather wild flowers. And there, naughty neighbor's children shouted at me, Look at that dirty, motherless girl. Then I retorted that I had my mother in the mirror, and I ran home and I saw the mirror. Alas, my mother's face was crying, because I cried. Then I felt still more sad and cried still more, and now still I cry. I said to the girl, Sweet child, the face in the mirror is not your mother's, but your own. The girl, flinging a quick, opposing look, impatiently said, So many, many years older than I you are, so much more wiser than I you are, but, my great lord, you know nothing of my mirror. The face in the mirror is mother's. So mother said, My dear mother never told a lie. The mirror was left me when she died, and she said, Whenever you want to see me, You'll find me in the mirror. I a thousand times have looked in it, and hidden there my truest face. Since then, every eve at dusk, when the church bell sounds to me like mother's call, I hurry to my mirror, and I see my mother looking at me. 
Then I said, Listen, dear little maiden, I will adorn your hair with the flowers, I will give you money for a new spring dress, and you shall smile, that's a good girl. Aren't you happy? Now look at your mirror, gentle child. The girl looked in the mirror and joyfully exclaimed, Mother is happy because I am happy. I'll not cry any more. You'll cry no more, my dear mother. Then we lay down in the sunlight with her pretty head on my knee. I told many a tale of fairy queens far and near. My voice was music to her ears. Her head languidly drooped, her innocent sleeping face in the mirror by her side. I saw the breezes playing with the tassels of her hair. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. How Near to Fairyland by Yone Naguchi Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo How Near to Fairyland The spring warmth steals into me, drying up all the tears of my soul and gives me a flight into the vastness, into a floorless, unroofed reverie hall. Lo, such greenness, such velvety greenness, such a heaven without heaven above. Lo, again, such grayness, such velvety grayness, such an earth without earth below. My soul sails through the waveless mirror seas. Oh, how near to fairyland! Blow, blow, gust of wind! Sweep away my soul boat against that very shore. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lines by Yone Naguchi Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Lines I love the saintly chant of the winds touching their odorous fingers to the harp of the angel spring. I love the undiscording sound of thousands of birds whose concord of song echoes on the rivulet afar. I muse on the solemn mountain, which waits in sound content for the time when the Lord calls forth. I roam with the wings of high-raised fantasy in the pure universe. Oh, I chant of the garden of Adam and Eve. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Spring by Yoni Noguchi, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. Spring, winged spring, a laughing butterfly, flashes away, rosy cheeked spring, angel of a moment. The little shadow of my lover perfumed, maiden spring, now fades. The shadow, the golden shadow, with all the charm. Spring, naughty sweet spring. A proud coquette, born to laugh but not to live. Spring, flying spring. A beautiful runaway, leaves me in tears. But my soul follows after till I catch her next March. Spring, spring. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Prose Poems by Yone Naguchi Read for LibriVox.org by Nima Prose Poems The summer clouds rise in shape of fantastic peaks. One, wave, wave, black hair of my beauty, wave and wave and show me where the love deepens and the forest silence thickens. 
Show me where peace is buried with heavy wings, and where hours never grow gray. Wave, wave, black hair of my beauty, wave and wave, and show me where the shadows are gold and the airs are honey. Show me the heart, joy of life and world, wave and wave, black hair of my beauty. Two. Touch me with thy soft hands, O Yuki-san. They are soft as moonbeams on the singing sands, O Yuki-san. They are soft as kisses of the eve, thy soft hands. They are soft as rivulets over the spring lands, O Yuki-san. O touch me again with thy soft hands, O Yuki-san. I feel the passion and truth of forgotten ages and their touches, O oh, Yuki-san. I feel the songs and incense and their touches, O oh, Yuki-san. Here by the sea, I sit from dawn till the dusk, O oh, Yuki-san. I dream of thy soft hands, soft as soft foams on the laughing shore, O oh, Yuki-san. The sun is gone and the soft moon is rising, but never thy soft hands again, O Yuki-san. 3. The rain stops suddenly when the moon made her way in the sky. O moon, thou art not the ball of fire and poetry, but thou art the mirror of my lady beauty, who imparts her own beauty and truth day and night. Here upon the garden of roses, roses are my lady beauty's favorite flowers, I stand. My soul rises from the odors and earth and comes close to the moon. O oh moon, my lady beauty's mirror, make my soul and love nobler by beauty and truth which my lady beauty imparts. I think only of my lady beauty, whose work of life was to turn my soul and love to gold. Oh, where is she this very moment? 4. Out of the gray forest. Forest. It is the forest, but I doubt whether it was not a shadow. I hear the gray voice of a bird. O oh, lonely bird, art thou still sad? Art thou still keeping comradeship with death and darkness? So am I, a poet quietly leaning on the wall of sadness. I burn incense and pray once in a while. How afraid I am to stir up the air of silence. Spring is coming so slow. My soul is kissing the heart of voicelessness. I hear the gray voice of the bird sinking and sinking far down like a dead leaf where does it go it is like my soul which started somewhere without purpose and is sailing without end oh where does my soul aim to go and again i hear another gray voice of another bird out of the gray forest dear lonely voice tell me where thou wants to go Art thou going into the silver temple of the immortal moonlight? Art thou going into the dusky bosom of the mother rest? Pray take my soul with thee, O oh comrade. 5. The happy little songs go today under the arms of a wind. My heart will go with them wherever they go. As the little voices of the leaves they go, laughing and singing now they are suddenly still when the white dews fall under the stars is it not the time for them to hurry to their beds in the house of peace by the mountain flowers my heart will be happy and go with them wherever they go six i hear you call pine tree i hear you upon the hill by the silent pond where the lotus flowers bloom, I hear you call, pine tree. 
what is it you call pine tree when the rains fall when the winds blow and when the stars appear what is it you call pine tree i hear you call pine tree but i am blind and do not know how to reach you pine tree who will take me to you pine tree seven out of the cradle of great silence from under the grave do you feel silence's touch the poet the singer of seen and unseen still sings his voiceless song the song of the land of shadow and agelessness the song of the land of peace and memory the song of the land of silence and mist i hear o poet thy new melody of voicelessness thy sweet song of eternal spring eve thy song like that of the moon over the land of sleep thy song of heaven and love o poet thy song fills my heart with sweet unrest and with dreams like passing clouds o poet thy song comes from under the grave out of the cradle of silence like the flowing tide eight the spring field calm odorous like the breast of heaven waving in red and green like a flowing sea in tune of breeze a thousand birds like ships singing of spring hope searching after a joyous life o oh, bird ships on the newest sea what news speak dear ships from another land only a love message my lord nine i and nature are one in sweet weariness my soul slowly fades into sleep is this earth or heaven the summer odor sweetens nature to dream the trees and birds murmur with the breeze i am blind deaf and also dumb i am a traveller toward god alas without a guide i say o oh, deathlessness o oh, happiness i and summer spirits play upon a vast sea of fancy end a poem this recording is in the public domain The New Art by Yone Noguchi Read for LibriVox.org by Nima The New Art She is an art, let me call her so, Hung as a web in the air of perfume, Soft yet vivid, she sways in music, But what sadness in her saturation of life! Her music lives in the intensity of a moment, and then dies to her suggestion is life she left behind the quest of beauty and dream is her own self not the song of dream and beauty itself i know she is tired of ideal and problem and talk she is the moth light playing on reality's dusk soon to die as a savage prey of the moment she is a creation of surprise let me say so dancing gold on the wire of impulse what an elf of light and shadow what a flash of tragedy and beauty end a poem this recording is in the public domain by the engakuchi temple moon Knight. Bayoni Noguchi, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. Through the breath of perfume, O oh music of musics, Down creeps the moon to fill my cup of song With memory's wine. Across the song of night and moon, O oh perfume of perfumes, My soul, as a wind whose heart's too full to sing, only roams astray down the tide of the sweet night oh the ecstasy's gentle rise the birds flowers and trees 
are glad at once to fall into oblivion's ruin white end of poem this recording is in the public domain to a nightingale by yone noguchi read for LibriVox.org by Nima. to a nightingale creator of the only one song triumph rapture and art thou tellest but with thy self-same word what mystery i have a few more songs and dreams than thou alas my words not serving at my command i tremble hesitate before i sing what carelessness in thy rush with song splendor is thine to sing into air be forgotten thou singest out thou pushest thy song's way without regard to the others waiting their turns pity the other birds and poets what a sweet bit of thy barbarism i know not technically what thy song means i take thee not only for a bird but the poet thou art a revolter against prosody what a discoverer of the newest language a man's life and art are disturbed by thy song what exhaustion in thy voice what a feast and sensation of thy life when thou changest him to become thy kin a thing of simplicity and force thy song stops thou fliest away oh can thy work be done so swift didst thou see thy song's future in him thou art suggestion what a fragment of art end a poem this recording is in the public domain i am like a leaf by yone noguchi read for LibriVox.org by Nima. I am like a leaf. The silence is broken. Into the nature my soul sails out, carrying the song of life on his brow to meet the flowers and birds. When my heart returns in the solitude, she is very sad. Looking back on the dead passions lying on love's ruin i am like a leaf hanging over hope and despair which trembles and joins the world's imagination and ghost and a poem this recording is in the public domain to the sunflower by yone noguchi read for LibriVox.org by Nemo To the Sunflower Thou burstest from mood How sad we have to cling to experience Marvel of thy every atom burning of life How fully thou livest Didst thou ever think to turn to cold and shadow Passionate liver of sunlight Symbol of youth and pride Thou art a lyric of thy soaring color thy voicelessness of song is action what absorption of thy life's meaning wonder of thy consciousness mighty sense of thy existence and a poem this recording is in the public domain shadow by yoni noguchi read for LibriVox.org by eva davis my song is sung but a moment the song of voice is merely the body the body dies and the real part of the song its soul remains after it is sung yea it remains in the vibration of thy waves of heart sea echoing still my song o shadow my song through in thy heart's thrill i see my far truer and wider soul and through my soul thou soarest out of thy dust and griefs spring past spring in roses and birds is merely the body 
and I see the greater spring. O oh, soul shadow she left, in the summer forest, luminous and green and dream. O oh, to be that spring over the word summer valley. O oh, shadow I may cast in the after age. O oh, my shadow of soul. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Fantastic Snowflakes by Yone Noguchi. Read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis and Nemo. Bah! What fantastic snowflakes, eh? Dancing merrily. Ha ha ha. Lo, their tiny feet raising so. Death is sweet, to be sure. Laughing, they go to death. What delicious teeth! Ha ha ha! Suppose we die together, eh? With the snow dying upon a pond? What a fantastic end! Ha ha ha! What a fantastic end to die in the dying music of ancient love! Behold the snow and music die. What a coward! Ha ha ha! Are you afraid to die? Eh? Still you love a little caprice of a world. What fantastic snowflakes! Ha ha ha! To leave no sorrow and to die! Such, Such a, a coward! coward. You, you, my, my beloved. beloved! End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ghost of Abyss by Yone Noguchi Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Ghost of Abyss My dreams rise when the rain falls. The sudden songs flow about my ears as the clouds in June. And the footsteps, lighter than the heart of wind, beat now high, then low, before my dream-flaming eyes. Who am I? said I. Ghost of abyss, a voice replied, piling an empty stone of song on darkness of night, dancing wild as a fire, only to vanish away. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Autumn Song by Yoni Noguchi, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. The gold vision of a bird wind sways on the silver foam of song. The oldest song rises again on the autumn heart of dream. The ghost castle of glory is built by the sad magic of time, with the last laughter of sorrow and with the red tempest of leaves. My little soul, born out of the dews of singing dawn, bids farewell to the large seas of life and speech. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Fantasia by Yone Noguchi Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Fantasia Bits of straw and clay and woman's hair, so shall be builded my house. Oh, to lose the world and gain a song. Let the clouds flit through the window at the left. The dancer shapeless in pain and pride, from the right dance in as a tide. A spirit of pagan days, sick in joy, that rose at the sound of their stamping feet. I'll sing a song. That makes the seas the hills. Morality begins, I am afraid, where I stop my song. Rags to roll me in, pieces of dream. So with my heart of nocturnal fear, I have chose of the sky red in memory and art. Let the stars fall in the garden rose. The leaves and my souls in a thousand guises hurry to the ground to build a grave. And a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Temple Bell by Yoni Noguchi, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. 
trembling in its thousand ages, dark as its faith. It wails, hunting me. It's a long time since I lost my faith. Up through the silence with a scorn, heavy but not unkind, out of the dusk of the temple and night, into my heart of dusk, hushed after my song of cities played, weary and gray in thought. My heart replies to the wail of the bell, slow-bosomed in sadness and faith, with my memory rising from dusts. Namu Amida Butsu. Namu Amida Butsu. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To the Cicada by Yoni Noguchi. Read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. What a sudden pain of ancient soul, a tear that is a voice, a voice that is a tear. What unforgotten tragedy thou tellest in thy break of heart. Min, 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 min. Gray singer of the forest with heart of fire, dost thou cry for the world or for my love and life? Is thy monotony of voice the tragedy of my song? Min, 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 min. The soul that reads the sorrow of life knows thy heart. Cry till the world and life gain the triumph of death. Let us earn death through the tragedy of faith. O singer of sad faith and only one song, Cry out thy old dream of life and tears. Min, 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 min. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Lady of Utamaro's Art by Yone Noguchi. Read for LibriVox.org by Nima. The Lady of Utamaro's Art Too common to say she is the beauty of line. However, the line old, spiritualized into odor, the odor soared into an everlasting ghost from life and death. As a gossamer, the handiwork of dream, tis left free as it flaps. The Lady of Utamaro's Art is the beauty of Zephyr Flow. I say again the line with the breath of love, and wrapping my heart to be a happy prey, sensuous, to some so she may appear, but her sensuousness divinized into the word of love. Today I am with her in silence of twilight eve, and am afraid she may vanish into the mist. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Buddha Priest in Meditation by Yone Noguchi Read for LibriVox.org by Nima The Buddha Priest in Meditation He is a style of monotony. His religion is aloofness. Is there any simplicity more beautiful? What a grand leisure in his walk on the road of mystery. Is there any picture more real, more permanent than he? He surrenders against faith. He walks on mystery's road. That is enough. He never quests why. He feels a touch beyond word. He reads the silence a sigh and prays before his own soul and destiny. He is a pseudonym of the universal consciousness, a person lonesome from concentration. He is possessed of nature's instinct and burns white as a flame. His morality and accident of life no longer exist, but only the silence and soul of prayer. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain.
In the Inland Sea by Yone Noguchi Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo In the Inland Sea Here the waters of wine with far-off desires Here the April breezes with purple flashes familiar and yet forgotten Oh, here the twilight of the Inland Sea Here I hear a song without a word. Is it the song of my flying soul? That's the song of my dream I dreamed a thousand years ago. Oh, my dream of the fairy world. Oh, the beauty of the inland sea. I sail and sail today in this fairy sea. Oh, my heart, hear the sailor's song of life. I sail, leaving the welcoming isles far behind. Hear the isles bidding adieu, O oh my heart. I sail toward the chanting sky. O oh, birds with white souls, steer my soul with white love. Hear the sea of my dream. O oh, the beauty of the inland sea. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Kyoto by Yoni Noguchi, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. Mist born Kyoto, the city of scent and prayer, like a dream half fading, she lingers on, the oldest song of a forgotten pagoda bell is the Kamo River's twilight song. The girls half whisper and half love, as old as a straying moonbeam, flutter on the streets God's built, lightly carrying spring and passion. Stop a while with me, I said. They turned their powdered necks. How delicious. No, thank you. Some other time, they replied. Oh, such a smile like the breath of a rose. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. My Little Bird by Yoni Noguchi Read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis and Nemo My Little Bird My Little Bird my bird born in my mother's tears, she flies, stretching her wings so, and from under her wings she drops my mother's message. Come home, beloved. Running out from my mother's bosom, my little river, she suddenly stopped her song, and looking up to the sun, she and her ripples flashed my mother's message. Beloved, come home. My roses, my little roses grow in my mother's breath. They are sad today, casting their faces down. On their petals I read my mother's message. Come home, beloved. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Her weapons are a smile and a little fan by Yoni Noguchi, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. Her weapons are a smile and a little fan. Sayonara, sayonara. Her bent neck like that of a stork, seeking a jewel of heart in the ground. Her wisdom is folded sweet in her bosom. Sayonara, sayonara. Her flapping robe like a cloud that follows a lyric of butterfly. Her song is on her tips of naked feet. Sayonara, sayonara. Beat of her wooden clogs, playing the unseen strings of love. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. My Heart by Yone Noguchi Read for LibriVox.org by Nima my heart. O oh Lord, is it the reflection of my heart of fire? 
is it my lord the sunset flashes of the western sky o lord is it the echo of my heart of unrest is it my lord the cry of a sea breaking on the sand o lord is it the voice of my sorrowful heart is it my lord the wail of a wind seeking the road in the dark o lord is it the dripping tears of my heart is it my lord the rain carrying tragedy from the heavens and a poem this recording is in the public domain the lotus worshippers by Yoni noguchi read for LibriVox.org by eva davis from dale and hill the worshippers steal in whitest robes yea with whitest souls they sit around the holy pond the lotus home their fingertips folded like the hushing lotus buds thrust through the water in twilight nun like and they pray the silent prayer that is higher than the prayer of speech. The stars and night suddenly cease their song. The air and birds begin to stir. O oh, resurrection, resurrection of world and life. Lo, sun ascending, the lotus buds flash with hearts parted, with one chant, Namu Amida. The stars disappear. Nay, they fall in their hearts. The worshippers turn their silent steps toward their homes, learning that the stars will fall in their truthful souls, and the road of sunlight is the road of prayer, and for paradise. Their faces shining under the sun's blessing gold, they chant the divine name along the woodland. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lines by Yone Noguchi Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Lines The sun I worship, not for the light, but for the shadows of the trees he draws. O oh, shadows, welcome like an angel's bower, where I build summer day dreams. Not for her love, but for the love's memory, the woman I adore, Love may die, but not the memory eternally green, the well where I drink spring ecstasy. To a bird song I listen, not for the voice, but for the silence following after the song. O oh, silence fresh from the bosom of voice, melody from the deathland, whither my face does ever turn. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Eastern Sea by Yone Noguchi Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Eastern Sea I say my farewell to the western cities. I will return to the eastern sea, to my isle kissed first ever by the sun. I will now go to my sweetest home and lay there my griefs on a mountain's breast and give all my songs to the birds and sleep long a wind may stir the forest i may awake i will whistle my joy of life up to a cloud the life of the cloud will be my life there how tall my lover now will be she was two inches shorter than i long ago when mid the wisterias the moon lantern is lit she and i will steal to measure our heights by their drooping flowers, drooping calm like peace. Should she win, I will pay her my kisses seven. I will take her seven kisses if I win. So all the same the kisses shall be mine. Then we will walk by the idols, the saints and the poets, and assure them that life is but love. With love and chrysanthemum, I will remain forever. End a poem. 
This recording is in the public domain. To a Sparrow by Yone Noguchi Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo To a Sparrow Sudden ghost that danced out again from the shadow and rest, Hunter of the memory and color of thy last life, Dost thou find the same humanity, the same dream? Consecrator of every moment, holder of the genius for living, thy one moment might be our ten years. Does it tempt, console, and frighten thee? Ghost of nerve, if thy voice be curse, it is with all thy soul. If it be repentance, it is with all thy body. Oh, would that I could relish the same sensation as thou. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Right and Left by Yone Noguchi Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Right and Left The mountain green at my right, The sunlight yellow at my left, The laughing winds pass between. The river white at my left, the flowers red at my right, the laughing girls go between, the clouds sail away at my right, the birds flap down at my left, the laughing moon appears between. I turned left to the dale of poem, I turned right to the forest of love, but I hurry home by the road between. And a poem. This recording is in the public domain. In Japan Beyond by Yone Noguchi. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. In Japan Beyond. Do you not hear the sighing of a willow in Japan? In Japan Beyond. In Japan beyond, in the voice of a wind searching for the sun lost, for the old faces with memory and eyes. Do you not hear the sighing of a bamboo in Japan? In Japan beyond, in Japan beyond, in the voice of a sea urging with the night, for the old dreams of a twilight tale. Do you not hear the sighing of a pine in Japan? In Japan beyond, in Japan beyond, in the voice of a river in quest of the unknown, for the old ages with golden heart? Do you not hear the sighing of a reed in Japan? In Japan beyond, in Japan beyond. In the voice of a bird who long ago flew away for the old peace with velvet sandaled feet. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Cradle Songs by Yone Noguchi. Read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis and Nemo. Cradle Songs One Sleep, my love, your way of dream by the fireflies shall be lighted. That I gather from the heart of night. Your father is off, good night, to buy the honey from the stars. The city of stars is away a hundred miles, but by the dawn he will return. Riding on the horse of the dews, for you, with a drum as big as the sun. 2. The flowers are nodding above your head. The flowers are made with sorrow seven, and laughter's three which are the best. The sorrow seven your mother keeps, 
mother's way is that a pain but the laughter's three make you fair and gay i rock you fairy boat on the tide of love sleep my own till the bell of dusk brings the stars laden with a dream with that dream you shall awake between the laughters and song and a poem this recording is in the public domain japanese hakus by yoni noguchi read for LibriVox.org by eva davis one what is life a voice a thought a light on the dark Lo, crow in the sky. Two, sudden pain of earth, I hear in the fallen leaf. Life's autumn, I cry. Three, the silence leaves from life, older than dream or pain. Are they my passing ghost? Four, is not the cry of a rose to be saved? Oh, how could I, when I, in fact, am the rose? Five. But the march to life, break song to sing the new song. Clouds leap, flowers bloom. Six. Fallen leaves, nay, spirits. Shall I go downward with thee by a stream of fate? 7. Speak not again, voice. The silence washes off sins. Come not again, light. 8. Is it too late to hear a nightingale? Tut, 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 some bird sings. That's quite enough, my friend. 9. I shall cry to thee across the years. Wilt thou turn thy face to respond to my own tears with thy smile? 10. Where the flowers sleep, thank God, I shall sleep tonight. Oh, come, butterfly. 11. My love's lengthened hair swings o'er me from heaven's gate. Lo, evening shadow. 12. Is there anything new under the sun? Certainly there is. See how a bird flies, how flowers smile. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of Selected Poems of Yoni Noguchi by Yoni Noguchi.